Hello, and welcome to another Vintageous Showcase. Today, we're going to talk all about really cool, cool vintage jewelry finds. So I hope you're excited to see some of these goodies. My name is Joni, and I'm happy to share with you these amazing, amazing auction and vintage stores like, you know, thrift shops and all sorts of things that I go around to hunt these down estate sales and so on. So without further ado, shall you, would you like to see the first one? Are you as excited about this as I am? I hope so. Okay, first thing first is this, what is this? What do you think this is? <laughs> Have a look and tell me what you think this is in the comments or in the chat if you're watching this as a premiere. How interesting, right? When I first saw this, my mind immediately went to Scandinavian jewelry. I thought maybe, you know, maybe it was a Swedish, Norwegian, something like that sort of sculptural piece. And it was sterling silver, you know, sterling silver. And it's got the, you know, sort of jade, it looks like stone insets. I thought, how cool is that? But it's not, a, it's not a necklace. It's jewelry, but it's not a necklace, really. Anybody know what this is? It is a sheepdog whistle. Did you guess that? <laughs> so what you have to do, do you see there's a hole there? What you have to do is you have to put this into your mouth and you just kind of barely cover it with your mouth. And then you try to blow through this hole like it's like a bottle. Okay, I'm going to try. I've done it a couple of times. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can have success here. Let's see. So I put it in my mouth. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Gotta get that sheep dog. As close as we're going to get. What do you think? But anyway, I'll sterilize this. Don't worry. <laughs> but how funny is that, right? So I thought that was kind of fun as a first little thing. But now I'm going to bring you over to my table because I want to show you some stuff kind of close up. So let's go have a look at that. So let's start with this beautiful thing. This is a sinner brooch. And it is signed. You can see that it's signed there. Really gorgeous grasshopper brooch with rhinestones and enamel work there. Just a stunning, stunning piece. Now this I bought from Katie at Vintage and Vinyl. She is the brooch queen. And I saw this brooch that she was selling and I hopped on it. Pardon the pun. <laughs> really cool piece, right? Now, Sinner. Sinner has been around since the 1800s, which is amazing. I'm thinking this was probably made in the 80s. So there's the grasshopper brooch. So this is the next piece I want to show you, this beautiful, beautiful acrylic bracelet. Hand-carved, hand-painted, signed, JMP. Now this one, my sister found for me in a thrift shop, which I just think is absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Super collectible piece. And JMP stands for Jean-Marie Peillot. He was a French designer that designed for many couture houses. I'm thinking that this was probably made in about the 80s. He's no longer living. And so this is a very, very collectible brooch. Isn't that cool? Do you like it? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you like. <laughs> All right, what's next? Woohoo, what's next? Okay, how about some gorgeous pearls? 
Now, this strand of pearls, if you haven't seen my story on this, I have another video on this that was really deceiving to me because I found these in a thrift shop. And, but I looked at them and I thought, that's a really different clasp, right? That round clasp. And even just the weight of them, you know, and just the quality of the opalescence of them just really made me think this was something. They weren't very expensive, so I put them in my bag and I got home. And when I got home, I noticed a couple of other things. One was that it had a little tag here. And the tag is actually on the other side, says show fill. Now, I know this is not going to show up on camera because it's so tiny, but it says show fill. And when I opened the clasp, I noticed that it was marked and it turns out to be 18 karat gold. So it's 18 karat gold clasp, but right away I thought, okay, this is something. And it turns out to be this uh, amazing, amazing pearl designer. So company that did, the German company, so Schofield. And this has Akoya pearls, and they're very, very high quality pearls. Schofield sort of renowned, or Schofield, sorry, is renowned for their pearls and started sort of in the 1920s to manufacture strands of pearls. Notice something else that I found kind of interesting that they're not knotted, even though these are super high quality pearls. Uh, they're sort of known as a luxury brand and because they're no longer really producing a lot of pearls, it's becomes, you know, their vintage pieces are considered very, very collectible again. So isn't that a cool score? <laughs> cool, cool scores. Okay. What other cool, cool scores do I have to share with you? I have this brutalist pendant next to show you. So this is a really neat piece and it's signed. So let's see if we can get it to to focus here and it's another French designer but this time it's not French Paris Fran France it's Quebec and so it's signed there Robert Lerin and he was a designer in the late 60s early 70s and he specialized in brutalist paint or brutalist necklaces and other jewelry uh, always kind of depicting something like this one to me looks like a leaf. Does it look like a leaf to you? What do you think? This is in pewter. And then he would use other chemicals to kind of give it a, a weathered or, you know, interesting texture kind of look to it. Cool chain too, really neat chain. I don't know, I think it's a neat piece. <laughs> if you like your sort of 60s jewelry. That's another one for the collection, right? Do you collect jewelry? Let me know too about that in the chat. I I love vintage jewelry and I I do collect it. I've been collecting it for many years. I just find it to be really interesting because you often find things that are one of a kind, right? Or at least that were low production. Um, the next thing I wanna show you is what the whole thumbnail was about. So this is a scarab beetle, okay, brooch. I believe from the early sort of 1920s, it does look like there are little green stones in there. I'm thinking maybe peridot. It does have, you know, the C-clasp backing that you'd expect from this era. And so now, why did, why did Egyptians um, worship scarab beetles. Well, it was because they felt that they would bring long life, like sort of the re regeneration of life, the eternal cycle of life. So it sort of represents the revolving bung, uh, dung that they would spin, kind of symbolized birth, life, death, and resurrection. And so they worshiped them. And in the completion of the Suez Canal in 1869, 
it connected sort of the Mediterranean and the Red Seas and propelled a lot of people to be curious about sort of the Egyptian lifestyle and ancient Egyptian practices. And so this is a what would be called a, an Egyptian revival brooch. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. Well, that's the next piece I wanted to show you. So you now know a little bit about <laughs> uh, Egyptian jewelry or Egyptian inspired jewelry, I should say, because this was a revival. And then I thought I'd show you another brooch. I've got a lot of brooches this time, but this one's really cool too. So this one is a Norwegian brooch and it has enamel, a special kind of enameling work on it. Um, and it, you can see it's like a little person that's being towed or you know, carted by a, um, a reindeer, I guess. <laughs> And there's the back of it. So you can see that it's marked 925 silver. Now, guilloche is a decorative technique, which is very precise. They used a machine that would do kind of very, very intricate patterns. And then they would enamel over that. Um, and so it gave this sort of really interesting patterns. You can sort of see them in the background there on this piece. The, they're almost like a sunset, right? On the on the background there, you see the sort of sunset design. That's the Gelache enamel. So this is a Norwegian piece. Really cool, right? Uh -huh. All right. Then I have a really interesting set of jewelry. So this is a three piece set. So it's a bracelet earrings, a bracelet, earrings, and a necklace. And it's mother of pearl and blue aurora borealis stones. Just a beautiful, beautiful set of, of the three pieces. Um, I'm guessing that this was probably made in, let's see, probably 50s or 60s. It was, you know, the, the way you can date this is that because it's got Aurora Borealis, it has to be sort of after 1955. So probably later 60s, this was designed. Um, I just think it's really interesting. It sort of has that Art Deco look to it, this set. Really neat, really neat pieces. And just really different, right? I love how the Mother of Pearl has been set there. You can see that, how it's been sort of set with prongs as well. And of course, the Aurora Borealis is just sparkling. Very good quality Aurora stones. It's not signed, so I'm not sure of the manufacturer on this piece. So if you want to help me research it, please do. Let me know in the comments if you know more about this piece. And then I've got a kind of fun piece that I found that I just it made me smile. Just made me smile. So this is the next piece. So it's a brooch, right? It's a brooch. But it's like, I thought at first it was binoculars, but I think they're opera glasses, right? Opera or theater glasses. And it comes with a, like a little chained on case. The case doesn't open. <laughs> so that's another brooch that I'm going to have in my Etsy store. And just a fun piece, right? It's kind of neat to have these really kind of interesting conversation pieces type of jewelry on. And... Last but not least, I have this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous filigree purple glass, I believe Czech brooch. Um, I was debating on this one whether it was maybe an early unsigned Miriam Haskell, but because it has what's called a trombone clasp. So do you see how it works there? 
So it slides in there and then the pin goes down to hold it in place. That's not really what I would, would think of as a Miriam Haskell type clasp. So this is older actually than a Miriam Haskell. And check glass uh, brooches often look similar to this. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a check glass one. But again, if you know something more, let me know in the chat. The trombone clasp, so this is one thing that you can kind of date things on. The trom trombone clasp, this clasp that has this pin, right, that you pull out, you put the pin in, and then you push that down and it holds it in place. The trombone clasp was invented in the, sort of was, and used in the 1890s and the 1940s. So clasps can actually be a really good indicator of age, you know, like back to the the um, the scarab beetle brooch, you know, it has that C clasp, and again, that helped me to date this brooch as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. It was super fun sharing my good, cool finds with you. It is jewelry finds. I hope I made you drool. <laughs> And have a look at my latest piece that I've added to my collection. I just love this. It's a cut crystal necklace that is in bright crimson red, which I just love. So I know you'll probably be seeing this necklace in a few more videos because I really, really, really love it. And was super excited to find it. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for joining me. And I hope you'll check out the other videos in this series that I call showcase and uh, learn about some other things that I have found along my travels. You know, I love you. Have a great day and talk to you and see you soon. Bye for now.